Hi, it's Eric from Axis. Today we're talking about toolpath trimming. The model on your screen has two 45 degree angles. If we look to program each of these angles, we're going to run into some long toolpaths, toolpaths that are not as efficient as they possibly could be. As you see, we have created a facing toolpath. Everything works the way you'd like it to work, except for the cutter path cuts a little bit too much air. It would be much better if it looked something like this. This is a trim tool path. Again, we're going to go from something that looks like this, cutting a lot of extra air, to something much more efficient. This cutter path cuts a lot less air. How do we go about doing this? That's what we're going to talk about next. One of the lesser known functions in Mastercam is toolpath trim. Toolpath trim is a function that allows us to be able to come in and actually edit the cutter path that we've created. We edit this cutter path by utilizing the trimming function inside of our toolpath ribbon bar. Select the cutter path we wish to trim, select the parameters in which we'd like to trim it, and it modifies the toolpath. Let's get started. As you can see in our Operations Manager, our machine group is broke down into two toolpath groups. Rotation 2 was the demonstration that we just completed. We are going to duplicate Rotation 2 and Rotation 1. Our first stop is going to be to our Planes Manager, where we're going to set our Construction Plane and Tool Plane to Rotation 1. Notice our WCS stayed where it was. Then we're going to go and make a solid selection of the geometry, which happens to be the 45 face that you're going to see. We're going to go into our facing toolpath. We're going to select a 2-inch face mill, set our speeds and feeds. We're going to move on to our cut parameters. And inside of our cut parameters, it's just a standard facing cutter path. So I'm going to set it to zigzag. I'm going to be setting my uh, along and across settings as the software defaults to. I like to use high-speed loops. We're going to make sure our depth cuts are set at something so that we can see it. Our linking parameters we're going to set to a depth of zero incremental where we selected the geometry and a top of stock of three inches and a little bit incremental from where we had picked it up from. Our next stop is going to be into planes. We're going to make sure our plane is set correctly. Again, our WCS is going to be the name of the plane. And then our tool plane and construction plane are going to be set to rotation one. This is our cutter path. Again, it works. It's great. It's just a little bit too long or too inefficient at this point. As we showed in the demonstration, what you see is a nice cutter path. It's just Again, it, the cutter's doing more work than it needs to. It's taking a little bit longer. It would be much better if we could streamline this cutter path. Now we're going to start talking about trimming. In order to trim, we're going to go into our levels and we're going to pull up a little piece of geometry that I've got created. Nothing more than wireframe geometry. I've taken this wireframe from the original block size and I've offset it one inch either way, which happens to be the the um, radius of the cutter. Now we'll go over to our toolpath trim icon. We're going to select our toolpath trim icon. It's, it's going to ask you for a chain to select. All right, we're going to go select our chain that we've chosen. There you go. It's going to ask you, like trimming a line, what part of the cutter path do you wish to keep? So we're going to select it in an area we wish to keep, which brings us to our trimming dialog box. We're going to select the cutter path we used, wish to trim. Do we want to keep the tool or allow the tool to raise or keep the tool down? In this case, we'd like to keep the tool down. Select our green check. The tool path is trimmed. Take a look at it in our isometric view. We're going to go into our back plot and we'll just run it. And indeed, this is a much more efficient toolpath. Notice the radiuses don't come with it. Again, we've trimmed this cutter path 
based on a planar piece of geometry at this point. You lose some of this stuff. Again, from the front view. Go back to our isometric view now, and we'll take a look at this inside of our verify and see what we come up with. We'll verify the whole programs together. And again, as you can see, there's our demonstration and there's our actual live cut. And that's all there is to it.